14% of all of the emissions of CO2 that we make as a species come from the production of cement. And so we have to provide that other voice which says, you don't actually have to do this. Why is it that the highest suicide rate uh, of any industry is construction? Why is that? Okay. So, and, 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 and part of the, what we think about that is that working in conventional construction is actually really quite demotivating, it's very male, there's not a lot of creativity. You're, you're presented with a concrete block and you're told where to put it and that's what you do. Um, so there's a whole range of kind of societal things that feed into construction and a whole lot of things in construction that feed out as societal things. And we have to, we, we actually feel that we have to touch all of these things because we're not just saying, let's make a bag of clay plaster, but we're having to look at the whole context into which that is going. One in 56 people in construction in the UK are women. But in natural building and in earth building, that's 50-50. And there's something to do with the mindset that you have when you go into using these kinds of materials, which is different, because we're not really selling products in quite the same way. Although there are products and they do get sold, but the starting assumption is slightly different. So NB UK is Natural Building UK, and we're a loose collective of um, businesses and organisations which decided that we needed a presence at things like this and that it didn't make sense to have an earth one, a straw one, a timber one, a lime one, a hemp one that actually showing together because all of these materials work very well together. My specialty is rammed earth which is a particular form of earthen construction um, like all the urban construction family, it happens all around the world. And we understood a few years ago that it was important to, um, to come together as earth builders to pool our knowledge, share our networks, um, encourage each other, um, make a common cause, uh, apply for funding, for research, for uh, for education, for development of policy, a whole range of different activities because Earth doesn't have a voice, okay? It's not a product, there isn't a great big factory producing it and so people don't really know what it can do. There's an assumption that any change in practice means that it's going to be massively expensive and I can make it expensive for you if you'd like but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Um, you know, since all of these kinds of things, you know, earth as a material has got, has got many, many qualities and a lot of those qualities are um, really around clay, because clay is our binder, that's what holds things together. And, and we can build six and seven storey rammed earth structures and the thing that's holding them together is clay. Clay in an unfired state will take on humidity from the air They'll, it'll take it from a, ga from a gas into a liquid and it will do it instantaneously. And so if you have a classroom full of children and they're all a little bit sweaty and breathing and so on and you plaster the classroom with clay, then the humidity in the air won't rise. It will stay at 50%. And so all of those kids that are asthmatic will be in their comfort zone. And that humidity of 50% is the hardest point for viral and bi uh, bacterial infection to hold and spread. So there's, there's a lot of reasons why in your office development you'd want it to be plastered in clay. And we're not talking about two millimetres, we're talking about 30 millimetres, a sort of a bonding coat like that. And then you might want it to be smooth and blue, in which case you get a two millimetre smooth and blue top coat and you put it over the top in clay. Clay is a highly sophisticated material. We, we haven't, we've never developed something, you know, in a laboratory that can do that job. It just does it. Most people around the world are where there is clay. And so, because clay lends itself in so many ways to building, um, 
that then most cultures are clay-built cultures. And this is something that's only stepped over and changed really in the 20th century, where you've had this step change from clay culture to cement culture. And, and, and it's very, very rapid in the late 20th, early 21st century. We've gone from producing a billion ton, uh, 1.5 billion tons of cement um, annually in the world in about 1990 to 4 billion tons now. That's a massive uh, rate of growth. 4 billion tons of cement means 5 billion tons of CO2 emissions. Okay, So that's why it's 14% of all that we're producing right now. It's a, it's a really big polluter. And it's come with a whole regulatory framework which, which is very easy to transfer from territory to territory. Once you develop concrete codes in the States, in America, then moving them across to Brazil and Peru and, 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 and India and China, and then of course they'll carry on doing their own development because they're selling bags of, of money, uh, bags of energy. And, and so they've got that, they have facility to then set up all of the architecture schools to deal with that and all of the engineering schools to do with that and all of that stuff. So the future for us right now is trying to sl slightly redress that policy imbalance, okay, and say actually you can have a standard for round earth. And we put a round earth standard in Zimbabwe and then we've harmonized it within the SADC region of countries, 15 countries in southern Africa, and then we've harmonized it in the African Regional Standards Organization. So now there's a round earth standard that covers Africa. These are massive cultural shifts. And it's, we're not obviously just talking about Ghana here or just talking about Africa. This is a global issue for all of us. And so as an organization, um, Earth Building UK and Ireland works with earth building organizations across Europe on policy issues to do with training. At the moment we're working on training for trainers. And trainers can be an architect, an engineer, a contractor, someone on site, um, a developer, uh, a funder, a regulator, you know, it, it spreads up. But we're having to develop those materials which allow people to have a different conversation than how do we put one concrete block on top of another. I think the biggest limitation at the moment is the lack of education, the lack of knowledge, the lack of experience, the lack of confidence that exists within the whole industry. If as many people knew about this stuff and had, let's say, five years working experience of it as have with you know bricks and cement right then they would be answering things themselves we would we will be redundant fantastic because they will be answering things for themselves essentially what we're doing now is trying to prime the pump we're not the pump we're a little bit of water that we're putting into the pump but the pump is this whole massive great industry. It's creative, it's resourceful, it has massive experience, knows what it's doing, just doesn't know how to use these materials which are valueless. The first thing that you do in London because of the value of land is that you dig a nice big hole and a whole lot of stuff comes out of that hole. Who owns that? What do they do with it? Well, it's dirt. So we find another big hole somewhere out in Essex and we drop it in there, okay? And now somebody comes and starts to control us with a landfill tax. And now we're thinking, oh, can we hold off from putting it in that hole and do something else with it? Maybe we could process it in some way, turn it into a plaster or a, a round earth mix or, some, or, or, or an unfired block. And then perhaps we could put it back on a truck and take it back into the centre of London where we're putting up a nice big CLT uh, tower block and put all of our internal partitions in, in unfired clay, which by the way belongs to us. It's capitalism, it's just slightly reframed. There's a massive reset to do globally and the reason why it's important for us to be here in London is that what we do here in London, for some reason, continues to be uh, 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 a gauge for others, you know, 
on the Indian subcontinent, on the African continent, China, they still do look at our technical developments and so on. And they've all signed up to the Paris Agreement and they have to make massive changes in their use and, and reuse of materials. Um, so a material that you're digging up and processing in some way which can be uh, taken down and broken up and water added to it and remade again tomorrow, there's a lot in it. But again, they don't have the the confidence, the experience, the skills, the knowledge, and they want to watch somebody else do it first. See, there's a lot of information out there. There's books, there's YouTube videos, there's academic papers, there's a lot of stuff. As an organization, Earth Building UK and Ireland collects that stuff, points you in the direction of it in different ways. We've got a, there's a website, ebuki.co, uh, and that also has links to other European organizations. There are other f uh, sources of information through that. Uh, so the, we're, we're information rich compared to where we were 10 years ago or 20 years ago or 30 years ago. Um, and probably our website is as good a place to start uh, as any.